So this question comes from Diego F. Any recommendations on a modem uh, slash wireless router with failover capacity and automatic load balancing. Two WAN ports, I guess. It's a small company with two different internet connections, different contracts from the same ISP, if that makes any sense. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I understand what you're saying. I don't really understand why that would be, but okay. The most relevant thing I have found thus far is the DSR500N and the DSR1000N uh, models by D-Link, but I'm a bit uh, concerned they're somewhat outdated. Besides, I don't actually need VPN connectivity, uh, so it would be under uh, underused. Any, uh, any advice would be appreciated. So this is an interesting question, and frankly, this is a type of question I haven't thought about in quite a few years. Uh, load balancing and failover in small office environments for their internet connections used to be a much more popular subject, basically back when internet connections uh, were a lot crappier, right? Back when we were dealing with 1.5 megabit per second uh, DSL connections, the idea was you could get either multiple DSL connections in, or maybe you could get a DSL connection and a cable connection uh, into a premises, and that way you would have failover, that way you would have load balancing. Um, wouldn't that be great? Well, well, as time has gone on, uh, most uh, internet connection has gotten a lot better, speeds have gone through the roof, and therefore things like failover and load balancing, at least in small environments, aren't so important anymore. Mm. <laughs> if you're dealing with data centers, if you're dealing with a thousand people in a building, it's a different story. But in small environments, you're dealing with 10 or 20 users, generally it's kind of just simply gone out of vogue. And so the idea with, with uh, load balancing, so whenever we're talking about these routers, we talk about load balancing or failover. What load balancing means is that the router will automatically select which WAN connection to use to get to the internet uh, based on current traffic patterns. So if, this, uh, if, if WAN connection one is currently saturated, then it will simply send all traffic over onto WAN connection two uh, so that there, there, there won't be so much strain. So basically, again, it's load balancing. What failover means is essentially if one internet connection, one WAN connection fails entirely, uh, then it will just simply switch all the traffic over to the second WAN connection and away you go. Here's the issue, right? Uh, the issue with this stuff is, again, whenever you're dealing with technology, uh, the more... Uh, the more systems you put in place, the more tools you use, the more things that can break, the more problems you can have, right? And so that's a problem you get into with, with failover and load balancing is this technology can be a bit quirky. Um, you're dealing with the intelligence of the device you're using, and those devices can be more or less intelligent if you, if you get my drift. So honestly nowadays, honestly nowadays, um, I would argue that the whole idea of load balancing and fault tolerance really is oh so 2008. Again, if you're in a data center environment and you're paying $5,000 for your router, do whatever the hell you want. In small environments, when you're spending 300 bucks uh, for your particular router, I would argue against it. Now, if you already have these contracts, if you're like, well, Eli, uh, for whatever reason, we've already signed, you know, three-year contracts for these internet connections. What else should I do? What I would actually argue is I would argue you use your one, one of the WAN connections, your fastest, best WAN connection, and just have that always on. Everybody's using it. And then basically, if anything happens to that one WAN connection, manually unplug it plug in your other one to the router uh, until the, the situation rectifies itself and go from there. That way you don't have the automated things in the middle. Because um, again, what you have to understand is, is when you have users, remember users are going to come to you with problems. And when users come to you with problems, they're not going to talk about latency. They're not going to talk about default gateway settings. They're not going to talk about any of that. What they're going to say is, for some reason, Salesforce doesn't work right when I go to this particular page. Or when I go to stream a video from this site, uh, the stream doesn't actually happen. And the reason that can happen is because of weird routing configurations, right? When that whole load balancing, if that load balancing isn't working just right, right, you can start to get some really weird problems. And believe me, as a technology professional, the last thing in the world I want to say is see is weird problem. Weird problems? 
Weird problems is what causes me to do a 24-hour shift. I don't want to see weird problems. And so when I look at it, when I look at load balancing, automatic load balancing, and automatic failover in low and low cost, low cost environments, I would stay the ever-loving hell away from it. Personally, if it was me, honestly, I would plug in the the, the best WAN connection, whichever is the fastest, the best latency, whatever. I would plug that in for normal use. If that one fails in particular, then I would unplug it and plug the new one in. Again, I don't know what your internet connection like is around your area, but I know here, at least in the Baltimore area, we are just light years of where we, we were, uh, ahead of where we were even 10 years ago. I mean, the, the connections are just stable, they're solid, they're reliable. <sighs> you know, it, it, here, and that's the thing, like, you have to think about um, what problem do you actually need to solve for? If your internet connection is dropping to the point you need something like failover, really you don't need another better router. What you really need to do is you need to scream at the ISP and figure out what the hell is going on, why their services are failing so much, and what you might find out is maybe they gave you a bad modem, uh, maybe the, the wiring that comes to your building is the problem. Because, again, I mean, I just have to tell you, nowadays... Now there's no good there's no good reason for a business for a small business to have to rely on failover is what I would argue. So let's get past that then. Let's get past that. So you say, Eli, I know what you're saying, but I want failover, damn it. So let's look at this particular thing. So he was talking about D-Link. And now I do have to say from my own personal opinions of D-Link, I hate D-Link. I hate D-Link with a passion. My opinion, that is my opinion. That is Eli the Computer Guy's opinion, but it is my opinion. I hate D-Link with a passion. Um, my, I might actually hate D-Link more than I hate HP. And... Just, just because. I've used a lot of their equipment in the past, and a lot of it I have found to be absolute and under paperweights. So in general, I would say I hate dealing. But let's go over to the webpage. And so we know whenever you're thinking about buying any type of equipment, you need to go out and do the research. So we go over here to the D-Link's webpage. We can take a look at it, and it tells us about the product. Robust VPN features, superior wireless performance, comprehensive management capabilities, blah, 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 blah. So this is all the stuff that, that D-Link spouts. So that's interesting. So let's go over over and figure out what the price on one of these things is if we want to buy it. So we come over here and we see it's a $303 thing. It's on sale, so normally it's about $370. Now, I'm telling you, for small business environments, $300 bucks is uh, somewhere around where you're going to spend for this equipment. I know it's, oh my golly, Eli, that's expensive. No, no, not for, not for a small business environment. $300 is about what you're going to spend. But what I want to show you is if you go over here to Newegg, you can see the reviews. And the reviews on this thing are just basically absolutely abysmal. If you go through here, um Let's see here, just cons, everything else. Seriously, the wireless is really fast. When it will freaking work? I've had this thing for over a year, and it has been uh, in service for three to four months out of all of that time. Disappointing, the interface is not intuitive. Uh, horrible latency here. So what you look at is if you actually go through and... Uh, look at the reviews. The reviews on this thing are pretty piss poor. So I have to say, my personal opinion of D-Link isn't very high. Uh, and when you look at the reviews for this particular product, I, I would stay the hell away from it. I would not want to put anything with a two egg review into a business environment. Again, if you want to put this into a lab environment, fine. If, if you want to use this in your home, fine. Do you really want to put a two egg uh, unit into a business where you're going to have 10 or 20 more users all calling you again if there's some weird quirky ass problems? No. And this is one of the things too, is, is whenever you're buying uh, equipment for your business, I always spend more on the devices that affect more people. So I, if, if push comes to shove, I may go very inexpensive on the computers. I may buy the lowest end Dell laptop computer out there for the sales force, right? If push comes to shove, they say, Eli, we've only got so much of a budget. This is what the budget is. You have to deal with the entire department. You know what? For the salespeople, I may give them low cost Dell laptop computers. And the reason is, the reason is, is because if one of those laptop computers fail, or even if two of them fail, it only affects one user, 
or two users. Now that one user or the second user is probably gonna hate my guts right at that point in time, but it's only one or two users, right? When you start dealing with the networking equipment, this affects everybody on your network. If this drops, acts quirky, does stupid things, you're not pissing off one or two users, you're pissing off every damn person in your company. Um, so I always spend, this is the one place, networking equipment, that's why I, I spend like, uh, I buy things like Cisco, I buy the higher end stuff because the network Networking equipment is what every every uh, device in your network ties into, and so I wouldn't go go low cost and wouldn't do two stars, wouldn't do D Link. Now the one thing for for the least expensive or the lower expensive thing to think about is we used to use the Cisco Small Business. Uh, VPN router deals. So I think this is a different version than what we used to use back in the day. But I installed these for years. I installed these for like four or five years and I really like them. Uh, it's not Cisco. Um, it's Linksys with a Cisco name on it. Uh, but it's still good. Like it's one of those things. It, it has a decent life lifetime on it. And with this, I think you get failover. And I think you also, let's see, dual gigabit WAM router is a perfect choice for companies that need a combination of performance, security, flexibility. Um, yeah, so it has, uh, yeah, so uh, for high performance networking and load balancing. So this will do what you wanted to do. It doesn't have the wireless component to it. I will say it doesn't have the wireless component to it. But again, when I'm building out a network, a lot of times what I like to do is I, sep I like to separate out the different components. So when we were building our own networks, what we honestly did is we used these guys for the main router coming into the small business. And the, one of the reasons I liked them for the main router is because... Um, it had a normal GUI interface. Like I could, I could have any technician go out and work on this particular router, and I didn't have to worry about it. If they had to do port forwarding, if they had to screw with the firewall, any anybody that had their Net Plus could work on one of these things. They didn't have to be Cisco certified. So what we did is we used this this guy for the main router coming into that small business, and then we actually attached a Cisco Aeronet uh, wireless access point to this. So we got the wire, the, we got the wireless quality of. Cisco Cisco with uh, the networking ease of, of Linksys, basically. So that is what we did. So this doesn't have the wireless, but I would say attach a wireless access point to it, and this would be the way to go. Uh, comes in at 268 bucks, so it's a little bit less than the other thing, so you add an, a wireless access point, whatever one you decide to go with, um, and I think you'll be happy. So this is what we use. Again, I, ca I can't give you a review on this particular one, but you'll see this has four out of five eggs, so at least that looks a lot better. So that would be that would be my thought i mean i would one i would say i wouldn't worry about redundancy and failover in 2014 i just wouldn't if i needed more speed i would buy i would pay for more speed out of my isp again i don't know your area but here it's ridiculous i mean for like because uh, i have business class fios that comes to my house and i mean it's ridiculous i mean i think it's like three hundred dollars a month and you get like a hundred meg uh, up and a hundred meg down I mean, just, just spend the extra money. You know what I'm saying? Like, why why worry about potential problems with failover and redundancy and all that? Just, just spend the extra money is what I would do. Now, the final question in here uh, was, um, I don't actually need VPN connectivity, so it would be underused. So this is one of those things. So whenever you're going out to buy these devices, whether you buy Cisco or Linksys or D-Link or Netgear or any of these things, uh, there's a lot of functionality and features in those devices. And so a lot of people say, like, I don't need VPN services, so I'm not going to buy a router that has VPN services. Good luck with that. <laughs> they all have VPN services built in. Like, VPN services have been built into almost every single small business router uh, that's been built for well over a decade now. So, um, it's not like you're going to get any cost difference. It's like, wow, if, if I find a small business router that doesn't have VPN services, I can save 20 bucks. Uh, no, no, that doesn't work. You will get VPN services regardless. So I hope that helps. Um, again, say the hell. I, my personal opinion, I hate, I mean, truly, truly. You guys know how much I dislike HP. And, like, D-Link comes under HP in my esteem. Like, well under. Like, Here's the thing, like, if I walk into an environment that has HP equipment, I will grumble, bitch, and moan. If I walk into an environment that has D-Link equipment, I will demand that we replace all the equipment. That's the difference. Like, HP equipment, if I walked in that environment, I just realized I've probably got a little bit bigger workload uh, than I was expecting. Uh, if I walk into an environment that has D-Link equipment, 
it's all getting replaced. I, I'm not I'm not tolerating that horse crap if you get one of my draft. But that that again is my my personal opinion.